Hi sweet peas, welcome back to my channel. My name is Primrose, it's so lovely to see you here today. And what we're gonna be looking at today is my top eight tips for witches that are currently in the broom closet. And if you never heard that term before, then essentially all it means is you haven't really told that many people that you are a witch. People that practice witchcraft are subject to a number of stereotypes and abuse just because people often relate witchcraft to worshipping the devil which <laughs> which if you educate yourself about what we actually do we don't even believe in the existence of a devil so for whatever reason which is in the broom closet which will probably most likely be yourselves will be in fear of any persecution from family or friends and if you don't want to share your belief with anybody that's entirely fine you're not obligated to come out to anybody, essentially. So I hope that you can make use of my tips, know that you have a community here and a space here that is safe and that you can be whoever you are here. I also just want to mention all of these tips are incredibly beginner friendly. They are incredibly easy, you know, even if you are not in the broom closet and want to do some of these tips, then by all means, because they're tips that I use still today and I've been practicing for over eight years. So really handy tips, whether you are in the broom closet or even if you're not. So with all that being said, let's move on to tip number one. So my first tip for which is in the broom closet is to keep journals and journals are essentially is what you would look at as a grimoire or book of shadows. If you are looking into the wicker path, but it is incredibly important, I think, for witches to also keep journals. So a couple of journal ideas that you can keep would be a dream journal. That's really good in terms of working on your divination. You can review your dreams, you can analyze them. There's so many different things that you can do with dreams and use that within your work. Dreams also open you up to your subconscious self. So if you do follow a religious path in terms of practicing witchcraft. Maybe certain deities will come to you in dreams, you know, it really opens up a whole other perspective in terms of working with deities, spirits, ancestors. So keeping a journal of your dreams and anything that you feel like you're experiencing is one great way to do that. Other journals that you can keep can include poetry, you can write poetry about your craft but obviously hide it in there, about nature, about anything that essentially inspires you and there's no real rule that spells can't necessarily be poems. I know a lot of my spells I like to rhyme, I feel like they flow a lot nicer so maybe you have a go at doing some poetry, incorporating some spells in there. Who would know? Literally, who would know? Keeping a general journal of your thoughts and your feelings, almost like a diary, can be another great way to connect with the craft. You can also keep a food diary and the reason that I put this in there is because foods have representations especially with the seasons so if you do follow a religious path that might be more applicable to yourself but another thing is if you're into kitchen witchery then that's going to be completely applicable to you because you're probably going to want to know about herbs and spices and different recipes that you can use them in again you see what I'm doing there it's like spell work but it's not it's like spell work but it's hidden do you know what I'm saying if you are a female you can also keep a journal to track your menstrual cycle I know a a lot of people within the Wicca community at least, they follow the moon cycles and a woman's most powerful time is when she is menstruating. So it's worth looking into, it's worth trying to sync that up with certain practices. You know, just like the moon has phases, so do we, and certain phases come to an end. So it's all representative of witchcraft and that spiritual belief. And I really feel like I connect more to my feminine self and my witchy self during those periods because your senses seem to be all heightened. I don't know if anyone else feels like this, but that's just my personal experience. So it might be a benefit to you if you do have a cycle to keep a journal of that. Tip number two that I would give to my broom closet witches would be to write spells in the back of books. And books are such a fantastic little way to hide spell work or 
things that you're working on. So it's so easy to pick a book that no one else is probably going to want to read that you actually really enjoy. For example, Twilight. I mean, I'm sure if it's your parents that you don't want to find out about what you are doing, I'm sure they're not gonna go and pick up Twilight off of your bookshelf. Do you know what I mean? Like, just find a book that no one else is gonna pick up and on the back page or within the book somewhere, even not necessarily on the back page, maybe you flip to a random page in that book. Maybe you write a spell or maybe you write, I don't know, whatever, whatever it is that you want to get out and write down, you write it hidden in that book and no one is gonna find it. You know where it is, but nobody else knows. A really good thing to do is to pick up a book from a charity shop or a thrift shop and write the spell in there. And if anyone says, oh, what's this in this book? You can just be like, well, I picked that up from the charity shop, so I guess it was in there when I bought it. Problem solved. No one is going to know. And even if you write it in pencil, you can always rub it out. There's just, it's just so, so good. It's such a nice little hidden place to write something. And I always find books the most charming thing. So I guess that's why they draw me even more. But yeah, perfect little hiding space would be the inside of books. Our third tip for the broom closet, which is, would be to press flowers. And I know it seems a bit airy fairy, but I don't know, there's just something so magical for me about the whole process of pressing a flower and you're preserving its its life stage within that moment. I just think it's so nice. The whole process is just such a nice process. And then you can use those pressed flowers in journaling, you can use it in spell work. You know, there's so many different things that you could do. You know, maybe you have an art journal that is kind of like a book of shadows or grimoire but it's just so hidden with beautiful flowers and decorations and different things so anything that looks like it has a practical use outside of what you're actually probably going to use it for is what you want to look for in terms of hiding what you do. So yeah, I think pressed flowers are so nice. You know, you can add them onto candles. You can do just so much with them. There's so many different opportunities. Even if you made it into a whole ritual, you know, you could make it a whole process of doing it on a full moon. You know, you, ha you make it special, make it something that is, that is witchcraft. You know, put your energy into that, put your time into that, you know, maybe the next full moon or the next moon you want to use those within a ritual bath. You know, there's just, there's endless opportunities out there. There really is. I'm just, I'm getting so excited for you and the idea of using these tips into your craft and doing so many different things with them. Maybe I have to do this in a whole other video because I could just go on and on about all the things that you can make from different different bits and pieces. So pressed flowers. <laughs> Fourth thing on my list would be to keep crystals and I just think it's a necessity. Every witch needs to have a selection of crystals. It's just it's just the thing that you do, you know? And even if you're not into like your amethyst and your rose quartz, maybe you're more of a obsidian kind of person and that's completely fine. Maybe you have a selection of crystals and you just say, oh well I think they're really pretty and I just think I like how they look. Just stuff like that and it doesn't have to become anything more but you can use those crystals in so many different things. So in spell work, in meditation, linking to your chakra, there's just so many different energy points that comes with crystals and so many different uses that just having crystals is like one of the most basic things for me. And I think it is for most, you know, most people that practice witchcraft. It's like one of those things that is so useful within the practice, but doesn't even look like anything abnormal. So I think, I think crystals are a really, really valuable thing. You don't need this massive tool set or equipment to you. And you can even get crystal wands. So if you get a crystal that is in a kind of wand shape without looking too much like a wand, then you can always use that as a wand. It's, it's channeling your energy. It's directing that energy. So there's nothing saying that you can't implement these things within actual witchcraft. And I just think they're really nice to display as well. So they don't look like something sinister. They don't look like something else. My fifth tip for lovely broom closet witches would be to have a herb garden and to have lots of plants. For me, again, this is a massive thing in part of my craft and what I do. I absolutely adore plants. They change and uplift my entire mood. If you enjoy kitchen witchery, herb garden is an absolute necessity. As I said, you can collect those herbs, you can dry them, you can use them in cooking and that's a great way to hide what you're actually using it for if you want to use it in certain spell work, making spell jars dream bags full of loads of different herbs or different teas. There's an endless 
amount of uses for herbs and utilizing them within your practice. Even the most basic herbs, for example. So say if you just had a rosemary plant and you just said, oh, well, I, I use that for cooking. I, I like the smell. Having rosemary is a fantastic protection herb. I think a lot of witches put that outside of the front door. You can hang it on doors and you can just really be discreet about what you're doing. And then in terms of having plants, plants just make the whole space feel so much better. But plants themselves also have their own representations about what they can mean and the areas that they should probably be placed in within an environment. So you can incorporate that into what you do. You know, it's, it's a living thing. It's a thing that is existing. It has an energy. There is no saying that you can't use that within your craft and draw on the energies from that. So don't be afraid to experiment and use plants and use different things. You know, you don't always have to go buy the book and say, well, you need a wand and well, you need this and you have to have this. It doesn't have to be that clean cut. You've got an energy, you put that out into the environment, you put that out into a space. That is having an effect. That is going out into the universe. So tip number six would be to make your room the altar. Now I'm gonna explain what I mean by this because it does sound a little bit confusing. If you're a witch that wants to have an altar but obviously can't have your generic setup, there is a few different things that we can do. So first thing would be to have all the tools for your altar in your room but completely spread them out. Make them look completely normal separately. Make them look completely normal in their own environment and then when you want to do your spell work or your witchcraft or whatever you want to call it. You bring all these pieces together. Maybe you have a section on the floor, maybe you have a mat that you put down, whatever, and that creates your altar. Altars can be shifted. Altars don't have to necessarily be permanent. People make altars outside. Do you not think they don't get destroyed by the weather or people or anything else? You know, they're made to be temporary. So don't worry if you don't have this dream permanent altar. It's not always gonna be like that, but you can bring all the aspects of different tools within your room to this one point and that is where you will do your witchcraft. Another thing that you can do is you can envision your room like a giant altar. So say you are looking directly into your room, obviously I don't know what your room looks like so if it takes a little bit of imagination just, just go with it, okay? Just go with it. So imagine you're facing the main wall. So you look at the typical layout of an altar, which I do have a video for if you are interested. I will link that just up here. Now, of course, you can set up your altar exactly as you want. This is just going based on my own personal beliefs. If it doesn't follow that for you, that's fine. Just use this as an example. So you're stood at your doorway. You're looking at the furthest point away from where you are. You've got your goddess representation, which will go on the left-hand side. And you have your masculine god representation which will go on the right hand side. Whatever space that you've got there on the left hand side, that is where you'll put your goddess representation. So maybe it is a candle, maybe it is a crystal, maybe it is an animal representation. Again, I will sneak a little video in here of all the god and the goddess representations if you are interested, but all the goddess things will go on that side. Now you look at the right hand side, furthest right point that is where you'll set up your masculine god area so maybe you'll use whatever your practice calls for maybe it's like dried animal bones or anything like that maybe it's feathers maybe it's again animal representations and now the whole space in between is your altar so maybe you have a, a basic white candle and maybe this basic white candle is going to represent your cauldron which is perfectly acceptable. Put that in the place where you'd have your cauldron in your altar. So personally, I have my cauldron in the center. It is in the middle. So what I would do is I'd look at the central point between these two, and that is where I'd put this white candle. And you want to look at your room as if it is this giant altar. And you know what? It's so much fun to do this when you actually like, even if you are a practicing Wiccan or whatever part of witchcraft that you follow and you do have an altar, just take your altar apart and set it up throughout the room and it's it really like gets you back into your craft. You know, if you're feeling a little bit stagnant with your altar as it is, just spread it out. It's completely fine to do that. People get so bogged down into the whole, it has to be like this and it has to be set up this certain way. It really doesn't. It's whatever you make it and it's whatever you want it to be. So spreading these things out will really draw attention away from these pieces if they were put in a 
scenario where they're all together. So if you physically can't have an altar, spread everything out. It doesn't look so intimidating. It doesn't look so bad. You're not going to say, okay, so why have you got this dark colored crystal here? And why have you got this here? Is that a representation for something? No one would do that, you know, and whatever these representations are to you, they're completely valid. You know, maybe it's pictures, photos, incense, whatever it is. And it's completely fine to work from an entire space, you know, make it big, make it beautiful, whatever you want it to be, it is yours and yours only. So keep it for yourself and make it something incredibly beautiful because it can be done. Tip number seven would be to have a variety of candles and remember that candles all have their individual representations because they come in a variety of colours and they come in a variety of scents so there is so much room and play in terms of having different smelling candles, having different coloured candles and then using that within your witchcraft. So for example, I wanted to do a romance spell. I would get a red candle, maybe scented with rose, you know, all representations of love and romance and passion. No one's gonna blink an eye if I've got a red candle that smells like rose in my room. No one would know any different. And I can easily use that in my witchcraft. It's, it's so small and so simple, but it's so effective, honestly. You know, and there's so many different options out there for you and so many different things that you can use them within. What I'd do is I'd stock up on some candles. Even if you don't obviously have loads of candles, just get candles when you need them for certain things. And my very last tip for you lovely people would be to remember that sigils are spells. And sigils are one of my favourite things because they are so easy to hide. You can put them in books, you can put them on clothes. One of my favourite things to do is to put them on the bottom of shoes because that stays with you, you know, that's going to be there for a long time and realistically who's going to notice a sigil on the bottom of a shoe? No one. Another thing that you can do is you can put them on the bottom of plant parts, you can do art with them, hide them in artwork, hide them. Honestly, I'm going to do a whole video on and all the ways you can use sigils because there's just so many endless things. They are witchcraft. There is a spell, essentially, especially if you're coming up with them on your own. Really bear that in mind. If you physically can't burn candles, you physically can't do spell work, you can because sigils are spells. I don't want you to feel like you are trapped and you can't carry out your craft just as much as anybody else because you honestly can. So that has been all of my tips for you guys today. I really hope that you enjoyed them and I really hope they've been useful to you. Honestly, like I say, these are things that I use all the time. They're so useful, whether you are in the broom closet, whether you're sticking one leg out of the closet, whether you have your head peeking around the door or you are bursting out of the closet. There's so many, so many different things that you can do. So yeah, if you did enjoy it, please do give me a massive thumbs up and subscribe because you will make me such a happy little bean. Thank you for being here. If you'd like to see more like this, let me know down in the comments or any other video recommendations. I'll be more than happy to do that for you guys. Thank you for joining me here today and I will see you, sweet peas, in the next video of mine. Take care. Bye.